Members, uh, that finishes uh, the, the questions to the Minister of Justice, and we must move now to questions to the Minister for Regional Development. And I call Mr. Gregory Campbell. Mr. Campbell, Principal Deputy Speaker, number one. Uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, my department uh, provides 681 free car parking uh, spaces in three car parks in Port Rush. I'm aware that Coleraine and Borough Council also provides 929 free car parking spaces in the town. Uh, in addition, there are grass areas uh, at Dunluce Avenue and Metropole Green, which are used as overflow parking areas during, during special events. Generally, the promoters of large events, uh, uh, including the North West 200 or the Air Show, uh, make their own arrangements to provide additional temporary parking as part of their event plans, and this uh, arrangement has worked well in the past. Officials from my department work closely with promoters and other stakeholders, such as the PSNI and Coleraine Borough Council, to agree traffic management plans for these large events. When it is considered appropriate, assistance in the form of uh, parking enforcement services can also be made available for such events. The work of traffic attendants, along with the PSNI, is an inter uh, in integral and necessary part of the management of such large events and aims to protect uh, uh, sterile and ambulance routes and other main routes, keeping them open and available for emergency services. Uh, officials from my department's road service are working along with their counterparts from other departments in uh, the Port Rush regeneration strategy, which will include the preparation of a transport model. This work will cover all aspects, impacts and modes of transport within Port Rush, including parking. Thank you. And I call Mr. Campbell for supplementary. Principal Deputy Speaker, I thank the Minister for that detailed response. Uh, and, and he's right, there are uh, good working relationships between his DRD staff and local councils and others. But on the big events, like, for example, the Irish Open and the Air Show uh, and the North West 200, will he ensure that that relationship at a very early stage is built upon to ensure that some of the problems in recent years are avoided in future, on future occasions? to the member for his uh, supplementary question and uh, accept the point that he, uh, uh, that he makes. And, and certainly, uh, I, I well recall, uh, particularly in respect of the Irish Open, uh, significant uh, work, preparation work, uh, was put in place by senior officials from my department. Uh, and of course, uh, as these events uh, come forward, uh, we will continue to uh, uh, assist not only uh, obviously in Port Rush, but all through Northern Ireland, and um, with particular reference, I suppose, at the moment to Giro uh, d'Italia. Thank you. And Cahill of Hoshin for supplementary. I thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, is the Minister aware of the extent of the amount of overnight parking and indeed multi space parking, which is part of the issue, uh, particularly in the Port Rush area? Corrigan. I'm grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary uh, question, and I, indeed I am aware uh, uh, I've had um, a series of meetings uh, and indeed briefings from uh, officials on uh, th this very issue. And um, I, I think some progress is being made, particularly uh, in the uh, proposals for an upgraded car park uh, in the Lansdowne area. Uh, I um, can confirm that directional signage to the recently upgraded um, off-street car park in the Lansdowne area has been replaced with new signage indicating that the car park is now free. Uh, I also propose to amend the off-street parking order uh, 2000 uh, to increase the 12 hours maximum stay to 24 hours. And in addition, the hours of operation of the on-street waiting restriction which limits uh, waiting to one hour uh, along Lower Lansdowne Road and Bath Terrace will be amended to operate midnight until 9 a.m. It's currently 9, 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. This uh, may also address some confusion that existed as to whether or not the restrictions apply during the day or night, uh, as the word midnight uh, will now appear on the screen, and it is due to come into force on the 3rd of March. In respect of uh, the other issues uh, that, uh, that he raised. Um, we continue to work uh, positively with um, all of the interested parties and we will continue to do that. Thank you. And I call Mr John Dallet. Uh, yep. I thank the Minister for, for his answer. Indeed, I was glad to see him in the area last Thursday, adding to the parking problems. But the, he has mentioned the enforcement agencies. And, uh, at the air show last year, I noticed the uh, red coats 
That's probably not the right name, but anyway, everyone knows what I mean. Certainly, we're making great use of their cameras, and I can assure you, Principal Deputy Speaker, they were not picturing the planes up in the air. They were picturing the cars that might well have been on uh, places where they shouldn't have been. Can the Minister encourage a little bit of flexibility where, of course, safety is not compromised and ensure that people who go to the air show the North West 200 and are not getting in the way of ambulances and so on actually don't get parking tickets? Thank you, Member, for your supplementary question. I, I'm not sure that I um, uh, accept uh, the premise of his original comment uh, the, that I was in some way contributing to traffic difficulties uh, in the area uh, on my recent visit. But nevertheless, um, I, I, I would say that I, I think it should be remembered that, um, that, that, that the parking attendants carry out very important work, sometimes unpopular work. And I, noted with some concern um, an incident um, at the end of last week, uh, which um, uh, will be pursued in other places in terms of um, injury to uh, a parking attendant. And I'm sure the whole House would wish uh, a speedy recovery to the individual concerned. And certainly that is not the way to um, treat in any way um, a parking attendant, someone uh, putting, uh, carrying out an important role. I understand the point the member makes. It is one that is commonly made uh, as I meet uh, not only members of the Assembly but also uh, chambers of business and commerce through various towns. Uh, I think the best approach, as in all of these things, uh, is uh, the approach of common sense. Uh, and that is what I look to uh, in terms of uh, fulfilling my own responsibilities and expect of others. Before I call on any other supplementaries, can I just remind members that this is a constituency specific question, but if members wish then I will take another supplementary. You're on. <laughs> <laughs> I call Mike Nesbitt, take a chance. Uh, thank you, Principal uh, Deputy Speaker. Given the uh, Minister's uh, track record of uh, imaginative and, and successful initiatives, not least the uh, five hours for a pound Christmas promotion in the Port Rush uh, area. <laughs> uh, can I ask if he has any other uh, business friendly ideas in mind going forward? So, uh, grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question. Uh, and indeed, uh, I, I think he does raise uh, an important point because we want to, uh, as part of the uh, executive and indeed um, uh, the Assembly generally, and I certainly, uh, as Minister for Transport, uh, Transport want to uh, make my contribution to help uh, the local economies in towns uh, all across uh, Northern Ireland and indeed our, our great cities too. Uh, and so uh, I, I have, uh, as he indicated, taken uh, a number of measures. We had the, the five hours for a pound uh, operating in almost 100 uh, car parks uh, uh, across Northern Ireland. We're looking uh, at the analysis of that and uh, uh, to see uh, how it worked, how successful. Uh, and if there are ways that we can further implement it. Um, he will know that um, uh, I didn't implement uh, the on-street uh, car parking charges that were advocated by my predecessor. Uh, we successfully argued and, and won uh, a moratorium on car parking charges. Uh, he will know also of the downward trend of car parking fines and our attempts to link in with councils to sponsor free parking days. So, all of those measures are still in the melting pot, and that's what we want to do uh, to improve um, the local economy for so many in our town centres, particularly, who are struggling at this time. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I call Mr. Mickey Brady. Chair Sever, I will let the question to uh, Mr. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, with your permission at the outset uh, of uh, my reply on this question uh, in relation to cycling, uh, I would like to pay tribute to Mr. Tom McClelland, uh, who died last week and uh, whose funeral takes place this afternoon. Uh, Mr. McClelland was a gentleman. He was a passionate and very knowledgeable advocate for cycling. Uh, he made a very significant contribution to the promotion of cycling and active travel generally, and his enthusiastic presence uh, will be greatly missed across uh, the cycling community in Northern Ireland. And I want to, on behalf of the entire House, uh, extend my sympathy to his wife and family circle. Could I, uh, in similar vein, 
because uh, I am aware that uh, some members will know of the death, the passing of Mr Eric McKinley, former Chief Executive of Craigavon Borough Council, distinguished public local government uh, servant, and again to pass sympathy to his wife and family. Uh, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I set up the um, cycling unit uh, in order to give increased focus and priority to the needs of cyclists uh, and to encourage greater participation uh, in this healthy and sustainable form of transport. I know the cycling uh, unit recently met with the uh, Regional Development Committee and it was a positive outcome. Um, the unit is identifying uh, the, the budget required in order to take forward its work programme and I hope to secure the, the support of other stakeholders for this and will explore with colleagues uh, who have a role in the provision of cycling the opportunities to seek funding from other sources. The uh, unit has started work uh, on a cycling strategy for Northern Ireland and is currently undertaking a number of meetings with stakeholders and other interested uh, parties. And it is also working with other departments to realise the legacy benefits of Giro d'Italia, which will be of particular interest uh, to the member. I thank the Minister for his answer, and you've probably answered some of my uh, supplementary question. But I was going to ask the Minister, is the cycling unit adequately resourced, and is it working with the other departments, councils and agencies to achieve its aims? Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Prin through you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, to the member for his supplementary uh, question uh, and for his positive approach. Uh, I think the cycling unit um, has caught the imagination. Um, not only of the, of the cycling uh, fraternity, but indeed um, within my department. And I'm very pleased that, uh, that the team that we have assembled so far uh, has enthusiasm and dedication uh, and are actively going to pursue uh, ways in which we can improve not only the, in, uh, the infrastructure, but also the planning and working greater, uh, 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 through greater coordination with other agencies and other departments as we move forward. I think the time for cycling is now. Mr. Jimmy Spratt. Thank you, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, and with your permission, can I too uh, join in the tribute to uh, Mr. Tom McClelland, who was a regular visitor uh, to the uh, DRD committee, uh, and a gentleman and one who was very passionate about everything that he did. And I would want, on behalf of the committee, to express, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, our sympathy uh, to the family at this time. Can I thank the Minister, uh, and the committee did receive a briefing just last week uh, from the cycling unit, uh, which was very worthwhile. Could the Minister uh, tell the House uh, whether or not uh, he has had any discussions, given that it's a cross-cutting issue in terms of health, in terms of the economy? Uh, has he had any discussions yet with other departments in relation uh, to this uh, unit and the, the, the great possibilities that uh, are uh, presented? I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member for uh, his uh, supplementary question and indeed uh, to add to the tributes to uh, the late Mr McLennan. And, uh, 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 and I think the point he makes is an important point uh, and a very worthwhile point, uh, the importance of coordinating, uh, not only within my own department uh, and uh, the work of ro uh, road service and TransLink and other agencies, uh, but also uh, the other uh, government departments, including health and, and indeed education. Uh, and I can confirm that, that my department, along with the Public Health Agency, is funding uh, a three-year programme of engagement with schools to encourage greater walking and, and cycling. And as, uh, this will be supplemented uh, by capital funding for, um, uh, uh, for uh, infrastructure. So uh, I think that coordinated approach um, uh, that is inclusive, uh, I think we'll see considerable benefits in the future for cycling and for uh, healthy, uh, healthier lifestyles uh, and, and will give us benefits not only um, in terms of health and education uh, but also uh, sustainable benefits to the environment. Mr Chris Little. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. If I could add, uh, on behalf of the Alliance Party, uh, uh, our tribute and respect uh, to Tom McClelland. He was indeed a big-hearted uh, gentleman, enthusiastic and determined campaigner for the national uh, cycling charity CTC here in Northern Ireland. And he was certainly central in encouraging the formation of an all-party group on cycling here at the Assembly. 
and my understanding it inspiring a, a recent decision for the department for or the committee for regional development undertaking an inquiry into cycling as well his, his effect and on cycling has been felt and I ask the Minister if he agrees that uh, the most fitting tribute that we can pay to Tom is to ensure that the work of uh, the department, the committee, the all party group and indeed this entire assembly make sure that we put a, a legacy of enhanced and improved cycling across Northern Ireland in place. Yeah. I'm to the member for, uh, for his comments and I think they do reflect uh, uh, very well indeed the uh, the uh, legacy that Tom McClelland um, has passed on. Uh, he has passed on a baton uh, in many ways, uh, to use a cycling um, term or analogy, and uh, I think it would be important that, that we carry this work forward uh, for all the benefits uh, that Tom McClelland and others uh, have been so committed to and are committed to, and, uh, and I hope uh, that uh, with the cooperation of, of, uh, of the all-party uh, all cycling group and indeed the Regional Development Committee and members of this House and the executive colleagues that we can do true justice to that legacy. Thank you. And I call Mr Leslie Cree. Question three, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, as the member will be aware, a number of roads in Northern Ireland have suffered damage uh, as a result of recent tidal events and storms. Uh, I have today placed in the Assembly Library a comprehensive list of the, uh, those locations where roads have either been subject to seawall damage or undermining as a result of uh, storm damage since the turn of the year. Uh, during last week's severe weather, a short section of road on the A2 between Ross Trevor and Warren Point collapsed. And officials are currently assessing this situation with a view to completing repairs as soon as possible. My department has carried out remedial works at a number of locations and additional preparatory work is underway in advance of the commencement of works at other locations. However, it may be some time before the full impact is known, uh, necessary repairs uh, are implemented and the full cost is realised. The estimate cost uh, is currently at $1.2 million. However, this figure could increase significantly once detailed inspections of sea defences are completed. Officials are continuing to assess the extent of the damage caused, and although uh, my department received additional funding from January monitoring, specific bids for further funding may be required, which would hopefully be considered sympathetically at a later date if repairs cannot be funded from within existing budgets. I call Mr. Leslie Cree for a supplement. Thank you, uh, Minister, for that response. Uh, Minister, have any specific plans been prepared in cooperation with the Dard Minister for major repairs to be carried out to the North Down coast and coastal roads following the recent storm? I'm grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question. Uh, I have to say that to date my priority has been to ensure that repairs to the coastal roads uh, are completed as quickly as possible. Uh, to uh, minimise the current in inconvenience to the travelling public, um, and uh, despite ongoing periods of, of, of adverse weather, I'm pleased to say that the road repairs at Valley Halbert and most of the smaller remedial work resulting from the initial tidal surge um, have already been completed. Repairs to the main area of damage near Valley Walter uh, have been affected by further uh, storm damage, but are still due, due to be completed by the end of March. Uh, as originally proposed, and uh, as I've indicated, repairs to last week's damage on the Warren Point or Strever Road last, uh, last week are also underway. Um, I have, uh, I can say to the member, I have noted uh, the actions by the military uh, in relation to the inspections of coastal defences in, in uh, other parts of the UK, uh, and I, feel, I do feel a similar approach would be helpful in Northern Ireland, and I plan to raise the issue with the Dard Minister uh, in the near future. Again, call Mr. Sean Lynn. Can I get the pre last can call you going Greek Stone era? Can I ask the Minister was he satisfied with emergency responses and are there any lessons to be learned? I'm grateful to the uh, member for his uh, supplementary question. Uh, I, I, I think uh, I, I, I must say uh, I I am satisfied uh, with the work uh, so far that the emergency services and all of the agencies working together uh, have provided through this very difficult and challenging uh, winter season to date. And al although we have not uh, fortunately faced the uh, challenges that other parts uh, of the Kingdom uh, have experienced, and I suppose we, 
We are thankful for that. Nevertheless, we have not com been complacent either. There will always be lessons to be learned, uh, and we will continue to uh, uh, apply those lessons uh, in um, a robust and a professional manner. And I call uh, Ms. Karen McEvitt. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the Minister um, for his responses so far? There's no one knows as much um, about getting bothered by the severe weather elements and those of the, um, that live in South Town, particularly around the Warren Point and Restriver area. And could I maybe take this opportunity, Minister, to thank all the workers and the, the, the staff departments uh, that kept South Down moving in what was, was very, very serious circumstances last week? And particularly thanks to yourself, Minister. Um, who left your phone line open for um, information um, as it was required uh, when, when this serious incident happened. Um, given the diversions that needed to be put in place um, around Warren Point, Restrever and Hilltown, um, the official diversion route um, would have, there was other roadworks happening at the time and it, it did uh, give a, a good beating up uh, on our rural roads, particularly around Warren Point, uh, uh, Restrever, Hilltown. Would the Minister include in his plans, maybe when he is looking for additional monies, uh, for monies to uh, put the, our surfaces back on these rural roads that have, that have been badly affected, back to a surface that uh, would be an acceptable uh, condition to drive on? I to the member for her uh, supplementary question and indeed her comments uh, uh, in relation to the work uh, of particularly of staff uh, who are involved from uh, all of the various uh, agencies, but I, I uh, want to particularly I uh, thank staff under my uh, uh, direction um, who, who performed, I think, uh, very well indeed, and indeed contractors, uh, because I know that uh, the A2 at Warren Point was closed on, on, on Wednesday the 12th and reopened to single file traffic on Friday the 14th, and that was ahead of schedule. Uh, the contractor worked through the night to undertake temporary repairs to uh, allow uh, the road to be opened. Um, and uh, the work will continue uh, most likely until the end of April um, when uh, it should then be uh, completed. Of course, that is very much dependent on, on, on weather conditions. Could I say that um, I, I am aware of the point that she makes in terms of, of, of the weaker infrastructure of the, of the network, considerable network of side roads uh, that a, a necessary diversion uh, will take uh, anyone using those routes. Um, there are challenges there uh, to um, maintain uh, all, the entire network and, of course, to improve them uh, as much as, uh, uh, as we will uh, seek to do. And uh, we'll continue to work at that. And I understand the point that she makes. And, uh, before calling the next question, could I encourage members to come as quickly as possible to their questions? Uh, in fairness to those members who are indicating that they wish to get called for supplementaries, and I've had on a number of occasions now to pass over people because we're simply uh, taking too much time to get to the point. Uh, there are currently four reports being developed to inform the Habitats Regulations assessment, uh, assessments of the potential impacts on the various uh, designated sites arising out of the A5 uh, project. Uh, work uh, is almost um, uh, complete on three reports, which will inform appropriate assessments for the water-based uh, special areas of conservation, including the river foil and tributaries and river fin special areas of conservation, as well as the special protection areas and Ramsar sites. My department remains on schedule to commence public consultation on these reports in, in April 2014. The public uh, consultation on the remaining report associated with the appropriate assessment for the Tully Bog Special Areas of Conservation is scheduled to commence in September 2014. Thank you, Ms McGahan, for supplementary. I thank the Minister for his response, and as you have already indicated, OFM, DFM had stated last week that a public consultation will commence in April. Uh, can I ask the Minister when will you be in a position uh, to provide a more detailed programme on the way forward? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member for her uh, supplementary question. Uh, the member will know, of course, that um, uh, we, we have been working um, uh, very hard uh, and consistently uh, uh, to um, deal with the, uh, uh, the remedies outlined um, by Mr Justice uh, Stevens. Uh, that, that does mean that um, it is virtually uh, impossible, if not uh, at least unwise to make predictions in terms of timescale, because to make predictions uh, 
uh, in any way that could be construed as, uh, as being um, uh, uh, something that was predetermining either um, the, the, the public consultation or the need for an inquiry or other technical assessment issues uh, could uh, give us further legal difficulties. So I'm not uh, in a position to uh, give a definitive time scale except to say that the Department continues to work professionally through the issues and the challenges that we face. I call Tom Elliott for supplement. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister uh, for the answer. Would the Minister share my surprise that Sinn Féin re raised the issue of the assessment of the Habitats Directive when it was actually their Minister who was in charge whenever the assessment was made in January 2011? I, I'm very grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question and indeed his timely reminder. And it does slightly surprise me that, that uh, some people, um, particularly uh, who, who, who seem to be genuinely uh, pressing for progress on this, fail to uh, recall uh, perhaps earlier decisions that have impacted so significantly on this particular scheme. And so, um, but when it comes to Sinn Féin, very little surprises me. Okay, and I call Joe Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the Minister for his answer so far? Can the Minister confirm to the House that the Department of Regional Development still has a dedicated team working on the A5 project and that all the stops are being pressed to make sure that there are no other handicaps likely down the road? Thanks. grateful to uh, the member for his supplementary question. And, uh, as I indicated in my initial reply, uh, it is my view that um, uh, we, we, uh, the staff uh, in road service uh, and associated agencies are working uh, progressively to, to deal with the issues that are presented as a result of the judgment that was delivered by Mr Justice uh, Stevens. That work will continue, as indeed uh, other work, including the, uh, the uh, payment of reinstatement and, uh, uh, and use and the occupation claims. Uh, proceeds uh, unabated by my department. I call Mr. Dominic Bradley. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, the Newry Southern Relief Road, which um, has been uh, the subject of a, a feasibility study, would provide uh, a link between the A1 Belfast dual carriageway and the A2 Warren Point dual carriageway. My department is continuing in, in to investigate environmental issues associated with uh, tree rings and sconces features on the slopes of uh, Fathom Mountain, uh, likely to be affected, and the impact of the proposal on the Newry Canal, obviously an important uh, heritage feature. Um, I uh, understand, uh, being a, a local representative, uh, that a southern relief route for Newry um, uh, would bring significant benefits to the local economy to both Warren Point Port uh, and the traffic conditions uh, in Newry City. Uh, and I want to take this opportunity to confirm my support uh, for the proposal, um, as indeed uh, the scheme may uh, uh, could potentially include a link between the Warren Point dual carriageway and the Omeath Road uh, and onward into County Louth. Uh, it, it, it would also, uh, I think, meet many of the uh, objectives of the Narrow Water Bridge proposal. Therefore, uh, I have asked officials to move the scheme forward and proceed with the various environmental and technical investigations which will assist in identifying a preferred corridor for the Newry Southern Relief Road. Um, can I ask the Minister um, if there has been any consultation on the um, indication that he gave that this project might combine two, two bridges, the Southern Relief Road and the Nora Water Bridge? I'm grateful to the, uh, 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 to the member for that. I think uh, rather than uh, consultations at this stage, uh, it is still early for, uh, for consultations to take place until uh, various technical studies have been completed. And, uh, also the environmental uh, um, impact studies. Um, I, I've talked about uh, issues around uh, uh, the mountain, Father Mountain, uh, and the impact of that. I've also talked about uh, the, uh, 
the issue of, 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 of uh, the Newry Canal and whether or not that, in fact, will require uh, uh, some form of uh, bridging or spanning uh, uh, to carry out there. But it does seem to me uh, that there are possibilities here uh, that, that, that we can, I think, um, meet uh, the objective of uh, a great many people uh, seeking for a, a, a link, uh, a, a bridge link uh, into uh, County Louth through um, creative imagination by using the best project, the most sensible project, the most popular project in terms of the Southern Relief Road for its importance to the whole economy, not only of South Down, but also parts of South Armagh and the benefits that would accrue from it. Uh, and I think with, with creativity, um, we could actually make some progress. Then the, uh, the period for oral questions, and we must now move on to topical questions, and I call Ms. Katrina Ruan. I have to say it's a bit disappointing in a previous answer, the Minister displaying his prejudice against Sinn Féin, but we take that as a compliment. The question I have, on um, on Friday and Saturday last, I was around the roads in Wern Point and Rostrever. The detour signs were disgraceful, or there were, in some cases there were none of them. And I just wonder, would the Minister like to update us on what work, if any, his department has done, uh, given the dreadful state of the roads uh, due to weather, but also poor investment by his department in those roads? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member. I think I'm grateful to the member for her um, backhanded compliments. Um, <laughs> uh, could I say that? Um, Unfortunately, I, I, I find that the members' uh, contributions uh, are, are invariably uh, negative, uh, and uh, uh, she, she seems to enjoy being uh, particularly um, negative on all aspects of, of, uh, uh, of uh, departmental uh, approach to, to, to her constituency, and that's not the case. Um, I've clearly outlined the sterling work uh, that was carried out by my officials uh, and other agencies in terms of restoring the network uh, of roads and, and making travel easier in the South Down area because of the adverse weather conditions. And uh, I indicated in an earlier answer, and I'm not sure if she was present, but if she was present, she certainly wasn't listening, <coughs> that the contractor involved worked through the night tirelessly to have that road, that stretch of, that important stretch of road reopened. I understand the point that was made earlier by her constituency colleague, Karen McEvitt, about um, the need for infrastructure uh, uh, to, to, to be supported within the network, the huge network of roads in South Down. I'll continue to look at that. And, and in spite uh, of her uh, negativity, we will make progress and we will um, provide as much structural and maintenance support as we possibly can um, to improve the overall infrastructure. We on for supplement. Uh, I'd like to thank the Minister for his answers. And um, I'll be very positive once we get the Narrow Water Bridge. I, like many people in South Down, are very much looking forward to that bridge happening north and south. Um, but my supplementary question um, is about the sea walls. We had to do uh, major round trips because of the break in the sea walls. Um, in Rostrever and Warren Point, and I wonder would the Minister like to update us on what assessments he's uh, making in relation to that and the work that's there. I know there's ongoing work being carried out, but what work now needs to be done given uh, the recent weather? Grateful to the member for her supplementary question. I, and again, I, I refer her to the answer that I gave earlier in the House in, in terms of work, uh, particular work that's been, that is ongoing uh, within particularly the Warren Point. Uh, and uh, 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 Rostrever areas. There's the, the section at Drumsesk and there's the section uh, at Rostrever. Uh, I have placed um, in, in the Assembly Library, as I indicated um, uh, 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 earlier, um, uh, more detailed estimates of both the work and the potential cost to those. Those costs will have to be faced by my department. If necessary, we will have to approach um, DFP for additional resources, but there is no reluctance on my part uh, to, to, to have those repairs carried out uh, as quickly as possible. We will do that and we will work constructively. 
Thank you, Principal uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, given the importance of structural maintenance to the roads network, can I ask the Minister uh, to outline his success in, in bidding for additional resources in the current financial year? I'm grateful to the uh, member for his supplementary question. Um, and, uh, I, I can say that my department has had a very successful year uh, in terms of our in-house bids. Uh, and as a result, uh, we will have spent a record uh, by the end of this financial year, we will have spent a record £124 million on structural maintenance. And I think that is a considerable achievement. Uh, it is not uh, without its challenges, and, and obviously there, are, uh, there is going to be a huge amount of work being carried out in uh, the coming weeks. That in itself will uh, lead to some inconvenience, I have no doubt, and perhaps even some complaints. My answer to that is, uh, with, with perhaps better planning in terms of the budgets that I get from uh, DFP and within the executive, uh, it would be possible to plan out those works uh, in a more strategic and cohesive way. But uh, in the circumstances that we find ourselves in, I think uh, the improvements to structural and the maintenance improvements to a great many of our roads throughout the network uh, all across Northern Ireland will be broadly welcomed and people will understand that in some occasions uh, you can't make omelettes without breaking eggs. For supplement. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I thank the chef uh, for his original answer. I congratulate him on, on his success, and let's not deny it. I believe the minister is also the most successful minister at drawing down uh, competitive EU funding uh, in the executive. But on the terms of uh, the question of structural maintenance, can I ask him uh, how Strangford, as a constituency, fares in the league table? I'm uh, grateful to the member for his um, uh, compliments and, uh, and for his uh, comments. Um, uh, and of course, all politics is local, and, uh, and he will be interested to know that in relation to the Strangford constituency, uh, local section offices uh, have taken at least an extra uh, £750,000, three quarters of a million, since the end of, of December to improve roads in the area. And, and I know that he will welcome that, as indeed. Uh, uh, other representatives will welcome that and see it as progress and see uh, it as achievement on behalf uh, of this department. And I pay tribute to all my officials for the sterling work that, that they are confronted with in terms of uh, making bids at times of year when you know, other people are thinking of Christmas or, or, or putting their feet up. Uh, but my officials uh, were busy um, trying to attain as much um, additional income into this department so that it could be properly spent to maintain uh, as best we can the network uh, that we have. It's never enough and as I go around the country and speak to people, people will identify roads and, and uh, carriageways that need further attention. So, uh, but I am up for getting as much money drawn down into my department so that money can be spent in a positive manner. Yeah. I'm going to call Mr. Stuart Dixon. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Minister, given your responsibilities for uh, lamp posts and road signs, uh, what is your view on restricting election posters from the various routes of the Giro d'Italia? Well, I'm grateful to, my, uh, to, the, to the member um, for his um, supplementary, uh, for, for his topical question. Um, in many ways, it's more typical than topical. But, um, <laughs> The, uh, uh, I think uh, he will know that um, my party were out of the blocks very early. My uh, party colleague Robin Swan I think, was the first of all uh, to advocate um, that uh, the political parties in the run-up to the European election should uh, avail of the opportunity to um, uh, promote the area positively and, and therefore not uh, fly or show the, the election posters uh, until after the event. Uh, I agree with those sentiments and I hope that other parties in that spirit uh, will agree uh, with that suggestion. Thank you. And I call Mr. Order. I call Mr. Dixon for a supplementary. Can I uh, thank the Minister for his answer and, and wholeheartedly agree with him that it is important that the par political parties do cooperate with regards to posters? But given that uh, uh, glowing uh, support that the Minister has given, would he agree with me that it is important that we extend uh, the removal of election posters to uh, flags that have turned to rags and other paramilitary yeah, yeah, yeah. paraphernalia, uh, murals and other things that are along the route of the Giro d'Italia? 
I'm grateful to the uh, member for his supplementary question. I, uh, I, I, I do draw uh, uh, an important distinction between um, cultural murals and uh, illegal uh, memorials, uh, and, and therefore, uh, and, and frankly, I don't like to see uh, uh, the flag of the United Kingdom uh, run to a rag uh, on, on any uh, uh, lamppost or pole. Um, and again, uh, against that, uh, I, I appeal uh, that, that, if, uh, that if, such, um, if there are such instances, instances and they can be dealt with uh, appropriately, then, then that is the case. But there is, I think, a significant difference between um, cultural and uh, uh, murals um, uh, that um, I think uh, many visitors and tourists uh, will like and expect to see and illegal memorials or monuments uh, to paramilitary organisations. Mr. Dahi Mackay. Minister, recently uh, TransLink have been reluctant, uh, to say the least, to facilitate proper cycle transportation on buses, uh, in particular Metro and Ulster bus. Now, I have spoken to a local company, a Northampton Wright bus, uh, and they have told me that they have rear, ve rear vehicle and internal solutions. Uh, for bicycle transport uh, on buses, and these can be attached to existing uh, stock. So I see no reason uh, why, this, why, why this issue cannot be progressed. Can I ask the Minister, uh, would he be willing uh, to accommodate any company that can do this uh, to introduce a trial on Metro and TransLink buses to see if this will work? To the member for his uh, supplementary question, and indeed his interest in, in, uh, in cycling and, and uh, how we can advance uh, uh, cycling. I understand uh, the point that he makes. Uh, I thought he was going to show me a photograph as though I didn't understand uh, what he was talking about, but I, 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 I do have a sense. One of the, I suppose, uh, uh, issues, uh, one of the successes um, uh, that we're constrained by in terms of TransLink, uh, in terms of room, available room for bicycles and, 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 and cycles uh, to, to be placed uh, on trains, and I know that TransLink have a particular um, policy uh, at, at the moment on that. I am happy to explore uh, opportunities either through the private sector or indeed um, via TransLink as, as, as to how that can be uh, improved upon or worked upon. Okay, for a supplement. Gordon Maggot, I appreciate asking Gordon. Can I thank the Minister for his commitment to, to explore that further? Whilst we're on the issue of buses, obviously it would be of some concern recently the uh, near miss. Uh, between uh, a number of cyclists uh, and buses and other vehicles, indeed, uh, on the Albert Bridge uh, coming into uh, Belfast from the east. Uh, does the Minister have any plans uh, to look at that bridge and that uh, particular route in particular to see how we can make it more safe? Uh, because it is only a matter of time before somebody is going to be killed or seriously injured at that juncture. So, um, grateful as I am to the, to the member for the supplementary question, uh, I. I I don't want to get involved in any particular incident or make any particular comment. Uh, the member may know that um, uh, TransLink, and in fact I was involved at the, uh, at the launch of, uh, if you like, uh, a better education campaign uh, involving cyclists with TransLink and uh, bus drivers particularly. Uh, I want to encourage that um, uh, through all routes um, and, uh, and hope that by working together a greater understanding and a greater tolerance, in many ways, um, can be uh, uh, provided for uh, all those uh, who use the roads. The important thing, the prime thing, uh, has to be the safety of everyone, uh, all, uh, all who travel our roads in whatever mode. Sir John McAllister. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, could I ask the Minister what discussions he's had uh, with regarding the EU Water Framework Directive with Northern Ireland Water? Grateful to the uh, member for his, uh, uh, his, uh, for his topical question. Uh, these are issues that we uh, continually, uh, through my officials and indeed myself, uh, explore with uh, the senior executives of uh, uh, Northern Ireland Water and will continue uh, to, uh, to, to carry that out. Mr McAllister, for sub. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker, and I'm grateful uh, to the Minister. Um, could he uh, tell us what potential costs there could be in implementing this, and who would cover those costs? Would it be 
uh, Northern Ireland Water, the customer, the taxpayer, or who? Uh, I, I, I'm grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary topical question. Um, he, uh, he will know that um, the, not only the, the issue of finance of, of Northern Ireland Water, but the governance of Northern Ireland Water uh, is uh, rightly under consideration um, within the Executive uh, Review Subcommittee, um, where um, all uh, uh, possibilities and all uh, outcomes uh, will be looked at and explored, I hope, uh, in a mature uh, manner. Uh, and I think that will better inform the overall debate uh, as to uh, uh, the way forward, including um, how we would uh, finance um, the regulations coming from Europe in terms uh, of our responsibilities. And order members, uh, time is up. That concludes question time, and we will now return.